Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and it's my latest tutorial. This is a look at this. Well, first, let me show you something. See this stuff right here? This is called Zimmeret. That's an interesting new thing that I do in this model. And there's a couple of other things that I'm going to show you. It's a 148 scale German flak panzer. So I'll build it in this video and show you some unique little things about it. It's a fun build. Stay tuned. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, so I ordered this flak panzer, and the reason why I ordered it is because this was the very first plastic model I made when I was a kid. Somebody gave it to me as a Christmas present. So I said, you know, all these years later, it would be kind of nice to build it again. And, well, much to my surprise, I didn't get the same exact one. <laughs> but that's okay. I think the one I had was 136 scale. This one's a 148 scale Tamiya. So anyway, I ordered it, got it from Japan. It was kind of neat. You know, it's amazing how the world works now. You can get stuff in a few days from all, of, all over the world. Uh, let's take a look at what's inside. A couple of things. See this? Those little um, bearings, some screws, all the different parts. And the base of the model is actually metal which is kind of an interesting little thing. It's different. It gives it some heft and some weight. But there's all the parts that come in the box. So let's take a look at the what tools and materials I'm going to use. little plastic tray to keep parts, scissors, an X-Acto knife, which I knew one I love, a couple of pair of tweezers. I love those uh, angled tweezers. Three different types of cement. Uh, the extra thin, the normal tester cement. And for this project, you need super glue because of the metal base. Um, a couple of emery boards to clean up the sprues. Um, a magnifying glass. And me I mentioned early in the video something about Zimmeret. I'm going to show you more about that. And to make the Zimmeret, it is plastic wood with some kind of a putty knife and a little tool for scraping lines. So Zimmeret. I'm gonna, we're going to look at that more. But um, all the usual stuff applies. Um, wash your sprues, wash all your parts in soapy water before you start and let them air dry. But look, let's take a look at the very first part we're going to do here. This is the front of the tank and it needs something called Zimmeret. Now Zimmeret was this uh, material that they applied, it's kind of like, think of like a cement, that they applied to the surfaces of tanks and stuff like that. And what it did was it caused a layer of non-magnetic material, you know, like a, like a cement, uh, that would so mines wouldn't ta attach magnetically to the tank. It's kind of interesting little thing. You should look it up if you're interested in Zimmerit. So they did do a bunch of vehicles like that, tanks predominantly. So um, to simulate that with uh, model making, um, we're using this plastic wood and some tools. So you apply a thin layer of it. And, and what I did was I said, you know, I've never done Zimmerit before on a model. So I got this plastic here and I practiced it. I tried a few different things. And I did notice the plastic wood works pretty good, but the thinner you apply it, the better. Try to get a really thin coat of plastic wood. And then use um, a really fine, sharp tool to get all those various um, shapes like that. So let's go ahead and do that first part. But overall, the Zimmer, it was an interesting new thing, and I'm glad I practiced because it takes a little bit of um, a persistence to do it. You gotta practice, you gotta, you gotta keep at it to get it right. And uh, mine didn't come out great. I've seen, I watched some videos of other people doing Zimmer and they come out really good. But that's okay. We do the best we can, right? And oh, and they make a tool. They make different tools that make Zimmer really, really easy to do with all those striations and those various lines in them. Kind of neat, but I didn't want to order it. I wanted to do the model. And see, you can see here, after the Zimmer is dried, the plastic wood has dried. See that pattern there? That's what the tank looks like. And that's how the real tanks look, something like that. Um, it makes me think of when a rhinoceros or something rolls himself in mud, you know, and then mud, the mud dries. And that's what it looks like. But you have to be careful because now that you've applied a Zimmer coating, um, other parts may be attached to that. So you have to be aware of that. Mask things off if you need to. And there were a few different places that I put the Zimmer like shows in the instructions show you where. So I went ahead and did those. See, there's a little, see the pink? And um, this, you know, this plastic wood is wet. It's pink when it's wet, and then it dries a wood color. So let's go ahead and build the tank. Enough about Zimmerit. Let's build the tank. And just like everything else, there's, a, you know, every other tank, there's about a thousand wheel assemblies. So for all the wheels and stuff. 
So I went ahead and built those and we're going to zip through some of these. Um, when I first um, got this video edited, it was 40 minutes long and I was like, no, I can't. This is, that's too long. So I trimmed out and cut a lot of stuff out of this video. And a lot of it was, you know, the wheel assemblies. So you, you're going to see, um, I'll, I'll do a lot of fast motion, five times speed, and I think some of it even maybe ten times speed or something, just to give you the idea of what's going on here. And one interesting thing about this model too is, you know, most other tank models and track models nowadays, I think it's the more modern thing, is they use like this rubber, some kind of a neoprene rubber or something for the t track, and you can actually spin them. This one doesn't. This one uses plastic on the sprue for the tank tracks which is a little bit different and they don't rotate but here we go so let's um build onto that uh, metal the base of the tank of the vehicle it's not really a tank all the various wheel assembly parts and that's why we need the super glue see because now we're we're attaching plastic to metal So that's something, another thing that's a little bit different about this model. You know, a lot of the plastic models, you don't need super glue. So I'll continue on. And you know, this model, I think it took me, it probably took me 12 hours to make. It's, it takes some time. This, this model, 148 scale is kind of small, so that makes it, you know, um, tricky to work with. You've got to be more careful with the smaller parts. And then from there on this chassis here, we just we're just creating little sub assemblies like this back panel, right? Which has actually like half a dozen different parts on it. Let me show you a few here. I think I show you point out a few. There's that and that and that and that and the muffler and this little even that little cap stand there. Those all get glued on, and then that gets glued onto the chassis. With super glue. All right, and you can see behind me there, there's a bunch of the wheels I've already started doing. So now we're going to be doing all those wheels, and I'll buzz through these kind of quick for you. And this one does spin, but there is a reason for that. That's so you can assemble it easily. Let's put you attach the tank track to it, not so that it'll run when you 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 know you, you can't roll it on the ground, and it won't spin. It's just for assembly purposes. I'll show you a little bit about that. Same thing here. All right, so now the tracks, see they're plastic tracks. And you paint both sides because you don't know if you're going to see the tops or the bottoms. And then here's the interesting thing. So there's a series of three of these track segments that get glued like this onto that um, drive wheel. So you glue that on, and then you glue a second one and a third one on. And now you can rotate that wheel so it matches the longer track sections. That's And that's the purpose for the rotation of the wheel. See, I, I just put the third one on. Now if need be, I can rotate that wheel just to match. See, right here, I've rotated that wheel so it matches well with this next segment that I'm going to put on. So I thought that was a little bit interesting, and I, and I think, and I could be mistaken, I, that could be this could be like old style. This might be how they did it years ago. You know, this might be an old model kit. See? And so we just continue that process. You do the same thing on the other drive wheels in the front. And all the way around, do tracks all the way around, on, and of course on both sides of the tank, uh, the vehicle. And there we go. So now we're going to start on the rest of it. So that whole under chassis is um, is done. Now we can move on to the base of the um, the vehicle here, the upper part of the chassis. And um, that main piece there gets a bunch of little parts attached to it, both on the inside and the outside. So like these vents.
So it's a, it's a pretty common process like this when you're doing, you know, different types of vehicles. Oftentimes, you'll build like an under chassis and then you'll build the upper part of the chassis. And on that, on, on each sub assembly, you'll put a bunch of little parts, and some of them get painted. And so that's that's what I've done here. And so we kind of started at the ground and we're working our way up. All this this part of the vehicle gets all its little parts. Some of them are even sub assemblies themselves, you know. And then that gets attached to the um, to the the chassis, and um, with a couple of screws, one here, one here on the left, and one on the right in that compartment that you can't see. So it's, so it's coming along. And from here, it could be a tank, right? But it isn't. It's a verbal wind, a flak panzer, which is kind of interesting. Oh, and there's, there's another little bit more of the Zimmerit. It, it asked for some more Zimmerit here on this front panel. So I went ahead and did that. And that needs some cleaning up. And for the most part, we'll finish up this over chassis here. Little parts, a little blackout light there. Some, some, some details like axes and stuff. Place that all on it. I love the little axe. I don't know why. It's just it's it's adorable. <laughs> all right. So now let's move on to the big gun assembly, the anti-aircraft gun assembly. And this is this is a complicated assembly. Took a long time to build all this stuff. But um, there's see and the guns. There's the four guns. You know, I'm having fun with the model building. Every once in a while I do one. I have, I think I have close to 10 of them here on my YouTube channel. If uh, you're interested in model building, different things. I, I try to do a different type of vehicle, you know. So I've done um, an aircraft carrier and a P-51 Mustang. And I've done, you know, a couple of, I think I've done a couple of tanks. And PT-109, which was one of my favorite. Oh, here, let's look at this. Here's an interesting little assembly thing. That big part there is we don't need. The little tiny part on the left there is actually what we need. And what happens is you use that as a handle, that large part as a handle to install it, glue it in, and then you snip off the handle. So that's a little bit um, different. You don't see that in a lot of model builds. But just be aware of that because you may want to snip off the tiny little bolts. They're actually bearings. Like, um, you might want to snip those off, and then you come to find out you can't handle them because they're so small. So that comes with little handles. That's an interesting thing. Next is the soldiers, the German soldiers. And, you know, the, the I didn't do much painting here on the whole model, but it does, of course, come with painting instructions. And there are options for the soldiers to be either in camo or in um, winter outfits. So I went with the winter outfits just because it was quick and easy. I already spent I had already spent a lot of hours on this model. I wanted to um, facilitate the process, but they look good. I like the winter camo. So now the guess you could call it the turret, where the gun's gonna go, just like we usually do. We put a bunch of little parts in that, in that shell. You know the magazines of ammo, the seats for the. Um, the seats for the soldiers. See, there's, there's a seat there, another seat there. You know, some various stuff that goes inside this that's standard. And then the guns go in. And I had already mounted that gun. I already mounted one of the soldiers on his seat on the gun, and then that goes in. And then the, the other soldiers go into this turret piece. And one thing I noticed was if you have a big guy, you don't want to be operating this vehicle because there's no room in that thing. Look at them. Look at the three of them all scr all scrunched in there. That's that's how it must get loud when those guns are going. And then put the top on it. Glue it on. And, yeah, one of the things I didn't show you because I wanted to, you know, sh shorten the video is I didn't show you a whole lot of gluing here or the cementing just to save time. And then put the top on, and this doesn't get cemented. This is that way you can continue to rotate it. And I, I didn't show you here, but the guns go up and down, and the turret rotates. And look, there you go. See the little details I love? The little colorful splashes of the 
shovel and the, the axe and the little gas can and whatnot. It's kind of cool. So we finish it off with decals, as always. And decals are not stickers. You soak them in water and then you slide them onto your model, just like that. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Um, if you build models, hey, I'd love to hear from you. Send me pictures. I'll put them on my website. Let me know what model you want me to build next, but check through the ones I've already done because I don't want to do the same one over again. Um, I have a playlist, but all my model, plastic model builds, all military models. Um, and of course, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff on my website. So visit my website, stormthecastle.com. And um, listen, um, this channel is... Um, proudly funded by people like you so if you can um, if you want to support me check out my link for patreon or I also have the paypal.me you can donate and help me to keep going thank you thanks for watching that video I hope you enjoyed it if you're a subscriber thanks for subscribing to my channel if you're not a subscriber hit that button I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects I do two new ones every week as an example here's a couple more videos you might want to watch